so I was reading uh, on Wikipedia about different colored glasses because I always claim that in my opinion technology takes step forward and then it takes steps sideways ignoring technology that's still valid so I saw here that pure magenta slash pink uh, mixed with cyan like bright baby cerulean blue sort of like lithium blue that those two colors are experimental so this is the type of problem i'm having which is that on amazon every single review of the product every single person online it basically just says that the leds that are in color aren't bright enough to produce a good bright color that i would need to experiment and see if i could cross light things uh, and to see whether or not once I cross lit them and then made them 3D with one of those, you know, either color I 3D programs, whether or not it would work. Because currently Amazon already sells the every color of uh, 3D glasses, I believe, even cyan and pink. Uh, and if they don't, they should so that I could test this out. I mean, I'm the only person doing the work here, so I might as well have the tools to get it done. Uh... I also, yeah, I was going to test out in really bright sunlight, like an amber colored glasses, if those could be for sale for, you know, like a few cents, uh, and dark blue. They say that that's difficult because of color, but our DJI has high brightness. And in a lot of scenarios, I'm thinking, especially in snowy environments like right now, I might be able to experiment and with you know, of course, after editing and everything, get interesting uh, effects out of that in certain scenarios. See, I'm so lame that all I was thinking is that movies instead, because I'm so much sensation based, you're like watching a 40X film, you're doing all these things, and you have like special glasses that have little uh, like lenses you can raise and lower in them that you can get for the movie so you can switch when it tells you to there's like an indicator for what type you need yeah. so then you can flick them up on either side or down or something and they still be cheap and plasticky and worth nothing uh so that you, we can get like a the best out of every type of 3d perspective while still using color glasses and it would be something fun and engaging for at least one movie i might make up for a movie for this if i can do enough research so, like, for example, um, green and magenta does better reds, oranges, and a wider range of blues than red and cyan. And I want to know how much that compares against pure cyan and pure pink slash magenta, because it says that it's got better red than than cyan i just want to know how those two go head to head and obviously they're two different colors so we know that they don't you know completely obsolete each other because you're you're combining two colors but it would be nice to know in what environments like say how much either of those works well within trees which one's the best for trees and say maybe trees on cloudy days versus happy sunny days versus between the colors um, yeah, just what I see out of all of this is that the pure red and pure cyan is really good for greens, like forests with tons of trees and mossy streams and stuff. So it'd be really interesting to work through a movie and see if I could get shots for each environment, like a small video. I guess what I'm trying to say here is bring back the color 3d because you know splitting frequencies with either eye is good but this is why i'm tying back into what i was saying before when you light things in two different directions this this ties into the printer that i made that's diamonding out 3d light it would do this better for this type of glasses anyways because it's like crossing through itself so even if it was going to go 3d again out of the front and split it it would create such dynamically crisscrossed rainbowed 3D light that it would work way better for your eyeballs in various colors. And I'm hoping to see this in theaters. That would be amazing. And a Marvel film made with this would be great. Um, 
what I'm trying to get across here is that, like, when you're trying to make a movie, lighting is in first and foremost. Even if it's going to be chintzy in a stupid comic book movie like a Marvel film, then we're getting back closer to the way they originally were with absurd colored outfits that match whatever the 3D needs because we're wearing color 3D glasses, right? And so... Um, the lighting on people, like I said, because I, I've seen it in a bunch of movies that it makes no sense for, they'll use color lighting and fog lights with different color plastic. That's why I'm not asking for bright color LEDs even. I'm asking for cheap plastic cover covers on hyper bright LED. You know what I mean? This shouldn't cost anything. I need it. It's a fake price point, so lower it down to nothing. I want to buy a 10 pack of hyper bright bulbs with covers for them that are every color for no money, like $10 or less. Uh, because nobody knows how to properly light a scene. I need infinite experimental lights. I need 20 for $10 that are just hyper bright, long, like light bars I can fog or else I'm never going to get that work done. And everybody wants to see the end results of that type of work because there's this simplistic reason where you can just say, let's put a blue light over here. Let's put a red light over there or cyan or whatever color temperature, right? And that works pretty well. You got one side of your face lit from behind and the other. And so it splits the color to the audience really well or from the front, whatever, what have you. But how much other neutral tone color can you mix in, you know? Because I was watching a video where somebody tried to color code the skin tones for a red and cyan effect as I was wearing some glasses that I have that are old. And I noticed that he had to make certain colors that were supposed to be bluer, sort of purple down the middle. And the skin tones had to be yellowish, sort of Homer Simpson-y, so that it would kind of balance out between the two. So all I was thinking is, if you had hyper-controlled lighting like these Marvel movies do, we could push even further, further and get even better effects like never before because the lighting is just... And there's QLED screens so we don't have to color code for green screen. Like, okay, perfect tones. When you bring all this up, I reached the ultimate conclusion here. Because I was looking at your color chart and uh, you've got you've got that gold and blue one. That's what I was saying, but it's, it's dark. And the so reason really why I'm bright. saying that will work the best is because black light and platinum has been feeding into those colors. So, there can be infinite depth and mixing of the two. Like, platinum and black light themselves are the inevitable end conclusion of 3D technology. Those two will be mixed... And the black light absorbs the platinum while splitting it into color in 3D automatically. That's the future. But we also need to experiment with colors, you know, for fun. Yeah, I'm just saying for fun, my flick glasses for at least one movie, maybe yeah. even another Fantastic Beast film after this one. Yeah. I mean, I realize they're ripping me off now because that's the glasses that Luna Lovegood is wearing. They have yeah. different spectrum shades True. that you flick up and down. There's chintzy plastic glasses that you could get at a theater that they're, they're not hard to make. They're just all smashed together with a robot arm. put that right on. into the movie, into her character. Just Before so, yeah. I ever did this shit. I'm just pointing out that everybody else is completely insane and that's why they're dying. Because your brain hemorrhages when you reach for the future that way. Yeah, because if you use the gold and blue, that allows the shadows to be good. allows people's skin to be good. Yeah, but you have to go super bright. Yeah. Everything has to be bright, so it has to be controlled like Fantastic Beasts yeah. or like one of these other films like Marvel for there to be the lumens available. Well, I guess if we're, you know, things are moving on because the last Fantastic Beasts movie, they were struggling just to use color cameras that were very good. Yeah, so this might be a good way of getting that color higher. Yeah. Again, because when True. you think about it, if we have giant bright color lights, then we're forcing maximum color into the 8-bit to where you just perceive the color on either side of them and in the environment. And, like I already recommended, because I recommended that, there's greater shadows so that it's okay that the brights are, are brighter and that it's a little darker because, you know, we're compromising here anyway. 
Yeah, the golden blue. I'm trying to figure out, like, it... When you, like, secondary channels of platinum and black light on the golden blue for yeah that would be the ultimate exactly because the budget's infinite it's it's uh the harry potter finale movies there's no we can do anything exactly hmm yeah i mean those two colors would work for this next harry potter film but they're not going to get all that color science done in time yeah i know well, I guess that's it for what I was talking about right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, Eternals, more. they got their camera done. And yeah. And the 3D was beyond fucking amazing. That's a different type of 3D yet again with the dithering back and forth so it makes your eyes think it's 3D. But at our theater, they lowered it from 1,000 frames a second down to 24. So the dithering was like tearing your eyeballs out. It was the worst thing I'd ever seen. But then we got another showing that it wasn't doing yeah, it. Yeah, so. that it was actually functioning higher, so. But not that high. Just barely high enough, you know? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could employ 3D glasses for this uh, movie as well. I'm thinking uh, personally that it would be great and that it's easy to do, even if you've already filmed everything, because you can apply digital lighting like they already did in the previous film to people's skin so that they really pop in 3D and it doesn't look like as if it's as badly splitting for people's eyes because they're pre-lit for it and the environment is in, in After Effects, because it's all CG anyways. So, that would greatly probably increase ticket sales and... What movie? Oh, the, this next Love and Thunder. It's not, it, it's just one more thing to, like a layer to apply to it. it. They automatically can coat all the edges in those colors of light and everything. Yeah. So, choose your color. I would say that this movie probably would do that experimental pink and blue color glasses like cyan and pink yeah there's more love and more thunder so. yeah because they already have advertisements on everything that were those colors so it just makes sense yeah you just fog the whatever closest lens to the um well actually the actual receiver for the data on the camera it's you know, pulling platinum light, and then it's a gold receiver. And so the gold automatically, when it's ionized properly, and at the right size particle, you have to get the right size, then it will automatically split the platinum through it, through the gold, as it absorbs the data of the light of the scene, and will make it have all the colors for grabbing for a 3D program, you know, that already exists. I mean, yeah, there's so many lens layer coatings that, of course, you'd want optics yeah. that assist the thing we're already yeah. talking about. So you'd also want a, a few blue-coated yeah. layer ones subtly. Yeah, we gotta do the literal layers of lenses so that we get the effect we want the way we want it. But like you were already saying, you need to literally, the other side of things is to make this all work together as a unified system. Fog with a, a light cover for the big overhead lights that are the highlights with gold as well. Yeah. So that it's it's a yeah, unified so it's, system. Yeah, so the platinum's coming through the gold for your lighting. Yes. So then it's already colored, split with the gold into color for the whole scene. Now then it's coming into your camera that way. Yeah, too. and yeah. then so it works better for a QLED screen, for example, yeah. like we were already saying. The blacks are the UV lights because they can produce blue all the way into green in different spectrums. There's UV dark colors. Yeah. So you assist some purple black light into the shadows with uh, blue UV black light as well. And then that, like, helps give the image luster in the shadows. Well, I'm saying that uh, blacklight actually exists as an actual light source now, and it isn't relying on ultraviolet. Okay. So you can just use the, the black light. Yeah, but I was just saying you should yeah. probably assist with a little bit of blue and purple UV yeah. lights anyways that are sort of black light. Yeah, definitely. That way you get a good spectrum in there with a little more color depth in the shadows. Yeah, people want that color. And that'll look good in 8-bit as well. 
That's true. Because yeah. we're using such bright colored lights, so dramatic, so blue and so gold. Yeah, we'll force 8-bit 3D like no one's ever seen. Exactly. That's why it's a good principle to show. If it works for 8-bit, imagine how good it works for 10, 12, 15, yeah. 16. Yep. While you should still light movies for the correct environmental situations and use colored lenses, I just realized that on top of that, why aren't you using the interleaved lenses in different colors? How would that not benefit the overall color splitting effect? And it would actually hold because they're two different frequencies. Why are you ignoring the color aspect of the movie just because you've made it interleaved? It could cause some seriously cool deep color effects.